you, if it's a regular episode, it's a premium smoke. You looking all sexy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, because iPhone is making it hard for a lot of these apps to 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 just <laughs> use their browsing and shit. I swear. Well, I refuse to learn Android, so. <laughs> Oh, shit. I refuse to learn iPhone, so 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 we both in the same boat. Similar. How you doing, baby? We can't be together. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, shit, that's more that we got than damn. Uh, yeah, I might have switched the iPhone. <laughs> so how you doing today, beautiful? I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad to see your pretty smile on the show today. I'm doing okay. <laughs> Another day in paradise, as I like to say. Another day in paradise. So, what has so how has your day been? What you been up to? Um, I haven't been sleeping lately, so like fall asleep around four, wake up at noon. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, don't get don't get it twisted. It's, it's not the older you get, it's harder to get great sleep. It's yeah. like when I was a kid, I was able to just sleep. Now as an adult, <laughs> it's like maybe because we didn't have cell phones back then. I don't know, but it feels like you can't get a good night's rest nowadays. It's like if the room is like two temperatures too warm, or like yeah. your blanket just isn't feeling the way it normally feels. Like it's just the slightest thing, and it's like mm, you're not actually gonna sleep. Okay, thanks. Oh, no. <laughs> See, me, I got the AC on. It helps me sleep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I guess the colder it is, the better I can sleep. I don't understand why, but I guess, you know, because if it's too hot, you just can't. It just ain't comfortable no. nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And how has the business been treating you since we last talked? Which, for my smokers, y'all need to go to Premium Smoke Room <laughs> because she got an episode. By the time this didn't drop, then probably didn't drop by now. Um. <laughs> My end dropped on the same week because I didn't have it happen with somebody from the smoke dropped on the same week that that regular episode dropped. <laughs> so, so what you been up to since then? You know, working, filming. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly when we last spoke. Um, I think it was a minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I was nominated. Didn't win. Spoiler alert. Yeah. But, you know, just being a nominated is an honor. I'm saying, you know, just just being recognized. (laughs) Yeah, because um, me, it like I tell people, the whether it's a fan or the committee vote for ABN, being nominated puts you in a different conversation and puts spotlight on you. You know, period. Because I didn't win neither, so don't feel bad. (laughs) You know, I mean, awards don't pay bills. Yes, they do, Mm -hmm. like, bring the conversation up to the next level. Um, But I was telling somebody the other day, you know, they're nice. You know, it's Mm -hmm. great. And like I said, it was an honor to even be nominated against the incredible Mm -hmm. crop of talent that (laughs) my name would even be mentioned with them. Was Mm -hmm. like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because even when I looked at the podcasts that I was on, Two of them, I, you know what I'm saying? One I look up to, I, I listen to all the time, Hall of Decision. The other one is Adam 22, which you got to subscribe to his only fans to even watch that. But, um, but, but it felt good. Did you mm-hmm. go to AVNs? Um, oh, I, and how was the AVNs for you? So I actually didn't go to the convention part. Um, my week was pretty booked um, mm-hmm. as far as filming and stuff, so... Oh my goodness. But I, so you like, didn't do no red, you didn't go to the awards? You didn't go to the awards? No. Um, I guess there were some shenanigans. Like you had to go get a pass for the convention to go pick up your nomination. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why am I gonna what is there at the convention for BBWs? So there was no booth. I think the girls who were signing were signing at the AVN. Mm-hmm. So I'm like yeah. so, I mean yeah, I had I plenty sure. of no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I have plenty of gracious people offer to go pick mine up for me, and mm. but I just I didn't want to buy into it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I heard that 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 red carpet was a mess. That's what I heard from talking to some people. <laughs> you know, I saw plenty of other gorgeous 
BBW performers representing for us. Um, maybe next year I'll go and I'll get my red carpet moment. <laughs> the only reason why I will go is just for the experience to, to, to check some off my, my bucket list. But yeah, yeah uh, but I probably be the one that I probably miss because I'd be too busy trying to do interviews with people <laughs> and podcasts and this shit and everything. So before we get into what all you did and who you shot with, who you work with, and what you've been up to. Let me speak to my smokers real quick, if you don't mind. Of course. How you doing, smokers? And welcome to the Smokers Lounge. You know who I am. Kavanaugh, the Southern Champ, a.k.a. the Porn Rap Star, a.k.a. your wonderful chocolate old missing tooth host. And y'all know where to find all my work and where I give them that work at allmylinks.com backslash porn rap star. Four sponsors that's bring you this wonderful podcast. The first one being the hottest adult mag in the game, racismmagazine.com. Next up, award winning, award nominating, voiceover with smut, and they got virtual reality, blushrocker.com. For anyone that loves candles, whether you like the smell, you like doing freaky shit, like pouring it on your mate. I do love wax play. <laughs> I got the spot for you, Kinky Candle Company. On SD, link in the description. And for anyone that needs legal needs and us as porn stars, we do need our legal. Whether it's child support, whether it's getting your record expunged, gun laws, anything up under the sun, I got the person for you. She's the queen of law herself, none other than Mitchell Ferrara from the Queen City. Look at the description, hit her up, get her services. She's a legit lawyer, and trust me, she's worth the money. And you can find me five days out the week on FullSwapRadio.com. Also, check me out at SkyHawkAvatarTV.com as well as the BGPLLC app. Now, as you can see, you smokers remember her interview. My premium smokers, y'all remember that nice booty and them nice tits on the premium smoke room where she's back. All oh, 72 inches of that beautiful peach, her beautiful smile, and her sexy ways. I'm talking about none other than the one, the only, Kayla Peach, say hello to my premium smoke to, uh, to my smokers. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, smokers. So she had on that sexy bra, so I was like, oh, damn, we about to do a premium smoke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And so y'all getting a little something, something. Go to the premium smoke room and go ahead and subscribe to check out her episode. She really cut up. So <laughs> tell me about AVNs. Who, where had you so busy? Um... I got to meet up uh, with a bunch of my favorites. There was actually a lot of reunions that week uh, mm. with Big Will, um, Adam Christopher, mm. uh, Miss Natalie Kinky, mm. and then some new faces, um, mm. lovely Missy Deep, uh, mm. Sarah Starr, and oh, Kai Bailey. I was like, what was the other guy's <laughs> 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 I was like, <laughs> you know, and that's oh so common, like, his he was oh memorable. Goodness. I just. <laughs> she said she was memorable. She remembered the dick, but she didn't remember the name for a minute. Goddamn, he he fucked into a stupor, ladies and gentlemen. He fucked into a stupor. So <laughs> it's like that sometimes. <laughs> so it was like so when so how far in advance did you book the shoots? Um, I'm trying to think if it was. They were like over like a month or so. Okay. Yeah, because it was, because um, obviously I think, you know, a lot of people fill up that week, like. <laughs> Still frozen? Okay. <laughs> no, the internet going in and out, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, obviously, like, the way I try to, pl like, I want, I plan enough to keep my week busy, but I also mm -hmm. try and leave some room, because you never know what's going to. Yeah pop up or mm. pop out um yeah. but also you know you gotta take care of yourself and if you're doing like five shoots in one day are you really bringing yeah. your a game to that fifth shoot yeah because that's one thing i always ask people how do you pace yourself because i i get it you excited you're at the aliens you get the opportunity <laughs> to shoot with people you ain't shot in a minute or some new ones so how do you pace yourself to where you're giving your best performance? Because when it comes to a man, it's different. The physiology is different than a woman because you got to think about your coochie. 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> nobody want to get fucked while they completely sore, let's be honest. Unless you're just a freak like that, you in the pain. So how do you, you know, pace yourself with it, it, how many scenes you want to do within a day or even a weekend? Um, I mean, I try to keep myself at like a two day, two a day limit. Mm -hmm. And then, um, as far as like how many during the week, mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I've done more than like three in a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So shoot. So is it because is it how physically tax taxing the scenes are? Or is it you looking at, okay, if these many, I'm still fresh. Anything more than that, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a fresh right at the top of my game. I mean, if I'm not doing more than two a day, I could probably like fill a week and mm -hmm. still feel like, but I mean, at the end of the day, I think what a lot of people don't understand is that not only is it physically taxing, but it is mentally tasking to perform. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, so. cause I, yeah, I recently had agreed. I agreed to come back and do a shoot, but then I mm -hmm. later changed my mind because <laughs> it's so much you got to do to get ready for a shoot, and and it's like I I'm like I've been out the game going on five years, man. Do I really feel like going through the prep that I got to do? Because it's different if me and the girls. Fuck buddies. That's my girlfriend. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's more personal with professional mixed in <laughs> versus if I'm shooting with somebody and we don't have no personal connection, it's more professional. So now I got to have a different mind state walking in versus if I'm fucking the girlfriend. You feel what I'm saying? Well, yeah. And especially like the first time with somebody new, like you're just learning somebody else's body. If you're with somebody you've been with, you know, on the regular you two can your chemistry is on already on point you already know each other so you know what's going to get those really big reactions out of them yeah <laughs> so it's kind of like so it, yeah and then on top of that not only just the mental prep and physical prep but also staying in touch with the person y'all bumping mm -hmm. ideas off each other you know because when you're doing content trade you kind of you get the opportunity to get to know the person before you shoot them, which kind of breaks the ice in many ways. Because even with me, I wanted to be like me. And you were doing content trade. We didn't got to know each other so fucking well. It's not even a question. We going. Mm -hmm. It ain't no filling out process. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I kind of know you got to feel for you. You got to feel for me. You know. Period. So when when it comes to how much do you talk to your talents before you shoot with when you come to content? Um, I think a fair amount, you know, we kind of go over like what we, what we're looking for, mm -hmm. um, concepts, um, you know, I like to ask, you know, if there's any don'ts or mm -hmm. like we have that conversation right before we film as well, but mm -hmm. I'd like to just kind of know ahead of time to just kind of like, okay, it's going to be more. You know soft erotic or oh no mm -hmm. we can get a little harder and a little more intense mm -hmm. with this <laughs> so for you which unlocks your freakiness sensual or hard <laughs> i mean i guess it's, if we're talking like freak hard i love a banged into the mattress pull my hair oh. <laughs> like I made sure my hair was long enough to be able to still be pulled because <laughs> mm. <laughs> I chopped a bunch of it off <laughs> spanking like that mm. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah it's I'm me a I'm a <laughs> sensual gets me because mm -hmm. I love kissing and I love the slow I don't get a choice we'll get rough at some point during the sex but mm -hmm. It ain't gonna start that way. <laughs> it, well, it, it no, gotta be yeah, a build up, something. a crescendo for me. Yeah. <laughs> so shoot. So, how many of the male town do you work with? Unlock it. You know, it's <laughs> it's hard because like everybody's got like 
different thing. I, I feel like it's a different reaction to different because everybody has a different style. So there's mm-hmm. different things p- different people bring out in me. And I think mm-hmm. people who watch multiple of my scenes, I mm-hmm. hope that's what they get and they can see the different experience with everybody. It's like, yeah, like I, you know, love the hard freaky stuff, but you know, I mm-hmm. also really enjoy uh, some of the really softer, more sensual scenes. Like, mm-hmm. it's that's why it's so hard to choose one. I'm like, because all of it, I just love. It. <laughs> you just love sex. Just, just, just I say just love you love sex. sex. Like, why do we yeah. gotta <laughs> classify it one way or the other? <laughs> <laughs> so now, also, when you pick in. With, with the challenge, do you how much I want to fuck them plays into the conversation? Um, <laughs> you know me, I, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> attraction does play into the conversation because I think you know, obviously, chemistry is attraction plus mental, so. And being that I, as a content creator, have the luxury of choosing who I perform with, you know, it's <laughs> it's a little bit easier conversation than having to go on a set where it's like, okay, here's your predetermined talent, like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I think the internet's freezing up again. <laughs> Okay, we back. <laughs> and you're froze. Okay, you're back. Okay, let's go. <laughs> this is it. Please work with us, smokers. You know how it is with these podcasts and these apps and this internet and this Wi-Fi. Because it's crazy. Like, everybody Wi-Fi is fucked up. <laughs> you don't matter. Mine's yeah, been yeah. so shitty this past, like, couple days. I'm like, what am I even paying for? Is that what I'm saying? I mean, you paying six to eight and a hundred for Wi-Fi that just goes in and out like it's nothing. I'm just be like, oh my god! But but back to what we were saying about uh, not cause even yeah because when you're doing content trade, if anyone's seeing say I don't take how much I'm attracted to the person into account, you're lying like a motherfucker. <laughs> you know, period, and. Don't get it twisted. You can be attracted to him and he'd talk his way out the pussy any day. You know, period. But the initial thing of, it's like, for example, when you go down his his, th- his thread, what do you look for? Sexually. We're not talking about the, the followers. We ain't talking about the quality of content. We're talking about the quality of his fucking. <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, it's kind of yeah, like I got a blushing like a motherfucker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of so like, sexy. does it have that? Like, would I, you know, get off to this mm-hmm. type of, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, if I was there, like scrolling, you know, mm-hmm. how we all do, you know, you get there, you start scrolling, looking for a video, you mm-hmm. got your toy on hand, ready to go. Like, is that the one I'm going to click? Is if I see, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, not because a couple times I didn't stop on the fed on the feed with you, so I, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because because to me, I think the stronger the attraction, the better the scene. Yeah, you know that's the reason why when people were saying back in the day, porn scenes look fake, they didn't understand that half the time these people didn't know who they were filming with. Mm-hmm. And they didn't have time to get to know the person, you know, period. Yeah. So with you, have you done, well, you've done some pay gigs, am I correct? Yes. But, um, like, I think there was only one instance where I didn't know who the male talent was going to be walking into it. Mm-hmm. So was you pleasantly surprised? I had fun. I was you know, he was one I would have chosen on my own. <laughs> you sure? Cause you don't sound too sure about that one. You know what I'm saying? Do I? No, because I did have a really fun time with him. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> so, but so when when it comes to like, of course, we're using the ABN swag because y'all do girl on girl, what have you? Um, how much do you try to like have a list of what you want to achieve, scene wise, when you go to these conventions? Like, how many girl on girls? boy girls threesomes and stuff like that do you have a list an idea of what you're looking for so i try to i mean obviously you have four weeks in a month so i like Mm -hmm. to try and drop one boy girl one Mm -hmm. girl girl Mm -hmm. and then one kind of more fetish and then one solo Mm -hmm. so like if you subscribe to me that's what you're going to usually see Sometimes there's not always going to be that girl, girl. So it'll be probably like another fetish or another solo. I know people so don't want to see me, you know, play with myself. I know it's hard for you guys. (laughs) But see, but see, the thing about it is, you hear women say, "My fans don't want to see me with a dude," right? Mm -hmm. And my thought is this. Why do women lie to themselves sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Why do they lie to themselves sometimes? Because even, even in the moment, you might have a lot of fans that have paid to watch that solo. If you look over time, that money starts to dry up. They want more. <laughs> Why do girls understand that in this business, you got to keep leveling up if you want to level up your money. You know, I think it's just experience. Like, I think some people came came in, you know, they started making really good money just by themselves. So mm-hmm. that's the target audience they acquired. And, mm-hmm. you know, I you know, see through my experience that opening, because I don't have a lot of girl, girl out, like, on Mm -hmm. some of the sites, um, because I'm terrified to talk to women because they're pretty. (laughs) (laughs) You know, happy Pride Month, everyone. (laughs) Oh, my God. I I appreciate appreciate you ain't got to do much talking. The way you, (laughs) you like you type female that you attract women. Well, you attract women. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> and everything. So now, I've been hearing a lot of girls been wanting to scale back, most because of money, because the money ain't money in sales and sales. I know you've been seeing the little tweets of people talking about that. In your opinion, why is the money not money in? Now? I think. You know, it's it's an involving marketplace. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got into this in the pandemic where all people could do was sit at home and consume content. We're kind mm-hmm. of a couple of years out of that now. So you really have, you're competing with the outside world. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't that a couple of years ago because I remember mm-hmm. scrolling through TikTok and it was like every other creator was advertising their OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. So it's that idea of kind of are you staying stagnant or are you evolving your content? Mm. Because my my money's been pretty good. My money's been getting better. And I think it has to do with I've been evolving and expanding my content and see the reason why and i want you to speak to this you're comfortable with being uncomfortable oh yeah <laughs> explain it to the <laughs> explain it to the smokers i had a girl explain it but i want you to explain it you know i i'm one of those people where i will take a bunch of things I will throw them at a wall and what sticks sticks and I know but I'm not afraid to go back to that same wall and throw a bunch more new stuff at it 
mm-hmm. you know, because I've had some different collabs with people that didn't necessarily. I was like, oh, they really didn't like that. But that just means, OK, we go back to the drawing board. Yeah. You know, it's sometimes the formula works and sometimes the formula needs adjustments. And it might just be that that idea wasn't a bad idea. It was just maybe the wrong co-star or you didn't do something right. Like, mm-hmm. I love, like, showers scenes usually do great for me. But I've had one, mm-hmm. I'm not afraid to say that kind of, you know, didn't quite live up to the hype. And I was mm-hmm. like, okay, maybe it's because I tried this new thing after it. And mm-hmm. they just like... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they like what they like. And see, I think, <laughs> yeah, because I think it's interesting that you said that. People don't realize we're taking a risk when we shoot. I don't care yeah. if it's solo. I don't care if it's boy girl or girl girl, because we don't know how the fans gonna react, especially to your co-star. You know, period. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I always tell the story. I have girls that look like the Instagram models. They swear, but now they're gonna make a shitload of money. But they don't sell shit. But the girl that looks regular, the BBW and all that, they're mm-hmm. selling like hotcakes, you know. Period. And so it's kind of like a lot of times women they pick the man based off of this is what I think is going to work, not necessarily thinking on a business end is he fitting me. And what I mean by that is I had a girl, Google, Google folk me. She tatted up black girl, look, hood city oh, yeah. girl, right? You know what I'm saying? She said, you'll never see me with a fat dude, chubby dude. He's going to be a muscular dude with tattoos. How the fuck it look like I'm fucking him? You know what I'm saying? So she realized this is the type male that I need to have in my film because that what mm-hmm. goes over for me. Do a lot of females take that into account when they pick the guy. Yeah, I mean, obviously like we're in a market where I mean, obviously there there is somebody for everything. Mm-hmm. So like I don't have any scenes that I haven't sold that I've sold a zero of. Like everything mm-hmm. I've made has at least sold once Mm. but there are certain formulas and certain co-stars that Mm. my audience responds better to and sometimes it's an unexpected surprise of like oh Mm. i didn't know if they were gonna like this guy but they loved Mm. it (laughs) yeah because i I was watching what was i don't know it was bbw adventures and they had a scene and the dude Look weird as fuck. I said, this shit gonna sell. <laughs> he was skinny, his hair, he had some crazy hairstyle. I said, that shit gonna sell because he just so odd looking. <laughs> that, and, that was, and I think also females don't take into account is like, because I asked somebody, I said, are there any drop dead gorgeous male talents out there? And I said, mm-hmm. not many because we as men can't relate to that. Because part of a a man when he watches Caleb Peach, he imagines he's with mm-hmm. Caleb Peach. Yeah. So he's gonna want to <laughs> see with a man of equal status to a certain extent. They still want him with a big dick, don't get it twisted. <laughs> but if we see her with number muscle dudes, it might hurt her fan base because not her whole fan base may not be dudes that sit here at the gym. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you think females take it to account? the type men that their fan might be interested in watching her get bumped by. I mean, I love a variety. I, Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I've got a pretty good spread of male talent in my, in my catalog, Mm -hmm. you know, cause I enjoy You know, I don't have, I don't really have like a type that I prescribe to, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of my interaction is personality based personally. Like if I'm Mm -hmm. dating, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, 
there is a certain looks component, but my attraction in the long term is more based off personality. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you know, you could be an attractive person, but if you have a shitty personality, like that's mm-hmm. that's not it. Yeah. Me. But of course, it's obviously different when I'm filming, like, you know, because yeah. I only have to deal with your personality for. <laughs> as long as well, a couple of hours back. and then we go. You know, <laughs> maybe I have a shitty personality, you ain't gonna work with them again. No matter well, how good looking he yeah. is. No, but I've been really lucky that I've, you know, most, you know, people, I haven't dealt with, you know, a really shitty personality. <laughs> oh, no, I, I've ran into a couple of shitty personalities in my life. <laughs> and I was like, no, I would never shoot with you ever. Ever yeah. again, and for a man to say that, that takes a lot. <laughs> it takes a lot, trust and believe. So, <laughs> so when it comes to you, because like I said, what do you attribute to why you don't have the same complaints as the other girls? Because, like you said, your money's good, mm-hmm. and I always said this. I said the females that do it all make the most money and have the most opportunity. You know, period. And if you don't do everything, you better be good at what the fuck you do that we forget. So, with you, what contributes to your continuing success? I think... I mean, I like to think it's, you know, because people, they get to know me and they get Mm -hmm. to like me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... I had one male talent tell me that a lot of times, like, people look at female performers like they would, like, if they were looking for a wife. And, you know, yes. once they find somebody, they want the, and they just want to see all of them. Mm-hmm. Whatever they do. <laughs> yeah. Because the key is to make a package that makes them invest in it emotionally mm-hmm. as well as physically. And then they'll invest in it financially. You know, period. Cause like I said, with you, you know, I, I think they love that seventy-two inches of ass and that and that, and that innocent looking face of yours. That's what it is. I think they come for the ass and stay for the fact that I like to think that I'm slightly funny. <laughs> well, shit, you got to have personality, um, no matter what. You know, period. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just personality when you talk, but also personality in front of the camera. Yeah. You know, period. Because like. If people pay attention, the porn stars that look like they're having the most fun on the scene get the most sales. Like, we love a female that's sitting there sucking the dick and she's smiling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and everything. And so, which, so my thing is, um, I know because you did AVN. Did you go to uh, Zaka, Chicago? I haven't done an Exotica yet. I think I'm going to pop my Exotica cherry this year in Jersey. Everybody, I got to get mad in Jersey because everybody going, <laughs> I get me a shit on the interview. <laughs> I'm an East Coast girly. I have to go. <laughs> I got to go where the East Coast represents. <laughs> if I see you, I definitely going to get me a nice, good hug with your sexy ass. Of course. See? <laughs> My well, now, booty, I'm locked. Anyway. now I'm committed. <laughs> oh, lucky man, lucky man. How long have you been committed? Hmm? How long no, you been I, committed? Said, I meant like I'm committed to Jersey. I'm not committed no, to Jersey. Oh, 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 I was about to say, yeah. I was about to say, damn, no, shut bitch. off the fucking market. Free agent. <laughs> like, I went on TikTok last night and people were like, oh, marry me. I'm like, mm, I did that once. We're not making that mistake again. <laughs> Worst financial decision of my life. <laughs> Oh my god! I tweeted today, and you probably saw it. I said, "Yeah, the single market sucks." You know, oh, um, it's and this comes from a man being single, so <laughs> it's like, cause like even with the girls on the Facebook, they it like they'll talk to me, and then all of a sudden they want to ask for some money. I'm sitting there like, you don't <laughs> even know me well enough to even ask me for a penny. The fuck, <laughs> you know, and. That's why I said, if something tell me if I end up dating, it's gonna be somebody in the industry. Because <laughs> they're the only ones I can relate to. I can't relate to these damn regular chicks. I can't be in a traditional relationship. It's just uh, so it's kind of like, go ahead. 
that's kind of been like the hard thing is like a lot of these civilian guys want to and I understand boundaries I understand having boundaries in a relationship but the boundaries they want to put around my work are not not it's not what I want like one guy was like you can't kiss a guy and I'm like no (laughs) because that's what works for me I love kissing I love that getting into the mindset you know it's yeah. it's the foreplay. Like you're asking me to skip foreplay. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm sorry. No. I don't see how you don't kiss doing a sex scene. I, I never understood that. I've been with girls say, I don't kiss. I'm like, why? Well, Cause my boyfriend. So if your boyfriend told you, you can't suck dick, you ain't gonna suck dick on the scene. <laughs> I'm like, if that way I know I would make the perfect. Maybe because even if I wasn't, if I was never in the industry, I probably would make the perfect boyfriend mm-hmm. for a porn star because. Uh, she was like, well, is there anything you don't want me to do? Do whatever you got to do to get that check. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, because I had a girl that I worked with and her boyfriend was around. And she used to hate mm-hmm. him when he was around. Because he expected to get the same treatment that I was getting, he was going to get personally. And I'm like, you do realize she don't like to ride dick. She's riding dick because it's a scene. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You, 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 just because she does it on camera don't mean you're going to do it in your personal life with your man all the fucking time or hardly at all. You know, period. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it's crazy. Even when we even try to restrict you, talk about you can't kiss. Them, right? <laughs> I'm like, do they really? I can't remember it, the I whole list. It, this guy sent me like a list of like five different items. And I'm almost like, we just Oh, started God, tell me the list. Please tell me the list. I, I gotta hear this. I wish I took a screenshot. This was like a year ago, because I I I dip my foot in for like a month mm-hmm. or two, and then I just get fed up with the whole process, and then I'm like, I'll just be I'll just be alone. I'll just start getting mm-hmm. some cats or like a puppy. Oh my god. <laughs> now my only thing is is like, and then the girls that do like me, they live out of state. I can't find nothing in the city. It's like what you the connect fuck? better with somebody, I swear, who is at least five hundred to a thousand miles away. I'm like saying. connecting with somebody in the same city is like no. <laughs> See, the ones I talk to in the city, they ain't got the time. Nurses. <laughs> Nurses. Oh, they ain't got the time. I'm like, damn, when when do you when do you have time? God damn. <laughs> How are you gonna expect me to keep interested if we don't see each other for shit? I'm like defeats the purpose. So, but I mean, <laughs> me, I can't do a long distance relationship, not because of jealousy or anything like that, because mm-hmm. damn it, I like to see you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, period. But I mean, or if, if her come to me or me come to her, you know, but it's just crazy that because with me, I want a female. Like with advances, I got no issue with my woman getting fucked by another dude. I would actually love to watch. Actually, if she was in porn and she decided to fuck somebody on camera, I'm like, well, take pictures <laughs> and send them to me, goddamn it. You know what I'm saying? That, so I can be turned on when you get home, you know. But I think it kind of like now people can understand why, as porn stars, we can only date certain type people, unfortunately. It's kind of because you can't just date a regular vanilla motherfucker because. Even on the female side. Because I had a female that see him and talk about some, I don't want to catch nothing. I'm like, woman, I get tested more than you ever got in your life. <laughs> the, that's like, I'm the cleanest thing you ever going to fuck. That like stereotype that we're all like, we all got something. It's like, if you're doing it right, <laughs> you know, and that's another reason I limit my scenes is because you limit your exposure. Like, yeah. Because, it's that you know you're sleeping with everyone that person slept with so i mean if everyone's testing right but you have people who are faking tests you have people who you know xyz and then that's how things get spread around and (laughs) and i'm gonna tell you what i find interesting that this is the most i've seen the conversation about fake tests how much of a real problem is that right now? It's not something I've encountered, but mm-hmm. I've seen, I feel like every couple of weeks I see a new 
usually male talent being outed for altering a test like and that's what i've been told is like you don't post like the results on twitter as you say hey i got tested here's my little selfie with my little you know bandage (laughs) yeah i never understood why people did that because it's not that i'm worried about screen someone stealing a screenshot that's not it Mm -hmm. i feel business like that should stay behind closed doors it's no different than when Miss Be Nasty or some of these girls supposed to how much you were making on holding fans. Some information does not need to be for the public. And I never understood why people posted their tests. Damn it, if you want everybody to know you're clean, motherfucker DM them. <laughs> or just tweet, I'm clean. You want to see my results, DM me. You know, period. It, I don't understand. Why the fuck you flossing the test? I, I don't get <laughs> I think in their mind, it just makes it like it's just a call to action if people want to shoot. But like I said, you know, just a simple selfie with, oh, hey, you know, I went, you know, or like I love how clear has the little prize wheel you can spin and just like there, there's your evidence that you were there. And as long as everybody's scanning the QR codes, that's what the QR codes were invented for. For our safety. Yeah. But see, I think what happened is personal versus professional. Mm-hmm. It's okay to want to fuck your co-star, but don't want to fuck them as a groupie. Yeah. Because what ends up happening is you overlook shit because you want to dick that bad. And a lot of girls do that. And then get mad when they get burnt. I'm like, you didn't scan the QR code? Oh, no, you didn't scan it because you were so hot in the ass, you didn't even think about that, did you? <laughs> I mean, so, it's... I mean, but... Go ahead. I like, I mean, yeah, like, I don't mean that from, like, a victim-blaming sort of thing, but it's just, like, we do have yeah. these checks and balances to keep us mm-hmm. safe. And... Yeah. As long as we follow these checks and balances, yeah. we can hopefully have less instances of this. Because I think it only makes all of us look bad when things like this yeah. get leaked, especially to civilians via Twitter. Because there's yeah, a lot right, of criticism you... about our industry. And a lot of it comes from people speaking about things like this that they don't really understand from our industry side of things. Mm. Because they're on the outside looking in. And mm-hmm. it, like I always say, it's not been normalized for us to be in the business. And I think that what it comes down to is, excuse me, I had, to burn. I had to get that out, excuse me. Um, what it comes down to it is, is that not only do you have to be careful in your personal life, but as well as your professional life. Mm-hmm. Because, see, also the big mistake girls make and guys make. Because she does porn, I automatically assume that she's clean. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Even to the point, like, even with me, I'm totally against fucking off camera with talent. The reason why, this one reason. One, you don't miss business with pleasure. And two, the test only is good last person you fucked. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I, I mean, like, it, like, hypothetically, like, if I get tested and then let's say, you know, Two days into my test, I go out and I hook up with some guy on Tinder, which is why I don't hook up with people on Tinder um, randomly. I don't get Tinder on my when I'm phone. Tested. Like my yeah. testing periods, I'm nope, I'm off limits. I'm only with other tested, verified people. Because once I do that, you know, with somebody, you know, not tested, that invalidates your test, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and and see, it, it, like I said, I don't even got ten on my phone. I'm like, like I said, this online. <laughs> I was actually I was banned the first it. time I tried downloading Tinder. This is the wildest thing. I I I downloaded Tinder the night before. I made mm-hmm. my little profile. I hadn't swiped. I hadn't done anything. I woke up the next morning and I was banned. No explanation. 
<laughs> Somebody must be a fan of Kayla Peach. That's why they <laughs> But that was before the Kayla Peach era. Like I oh, was damn. still I had only had my OF for a couple months. I had that was before my pro shoot. That was before I was even known as damn. Kayla Peach. <laughs> I don't Damn. know. Just somebody was like, I don't like her face, bear. <laughs> I would have swiped you like, yes. <laughs> yes. Can we meet up tonight? What are you talking about? I want to taste that peach. I think that was the universe saying like, you don't need this right now. Because that was oh, fresh no. out of moving out of my house. <laughs> my ex. Yeah, because <laughs> they were like, no, God, you are not Even with me, right I'm now. like, like even when I listen to Tinder, the people do in Tinder, they meet up and fuck. I'm like, I need to get to know you a little bit before we can get the but before you give me the buzz. I'm like, at least know your name and your last name, your first and last name. <laughs> I just you need know. to know your government before we fuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying this motherfucker. It's just like it's just like I said, it's just like this dating scene. And I know it's hard, it, it's hard enough for the regular person, but it's extra hard for us. Because so much shit we have to deal with, with the misconceptions and, and stuff like that, and in your situation, more so than even the men, you got to tell the difference between the one that it genuinely likes you, or they want to fuck Kayla Peach. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's so it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Like having gone to my first VBW bash before. Mm-hmm. I really got into the industry and just like seeing the attention and then going last year to the BBW bashes and being the, yeah. because being like, oh, that's that's her. <laughs> and like telling the difference. <laughs> I am so jealous. I want to go to a BBW bash, especially when to be having in Vegas. I'll be in Come heaven. out. <laughs> Come out for one. <laughs> wait, wait, don't worry, cuz cause, cause I, I like you for you, not that you came to Peach. <laughs> <laughs> so, but dog, because because I because like I said, I don't know if men we deal with that, you know, uh, that women want us just because they saw us on porn. Actuality, they are more turned off by it a lot of times, you know, pretty because they worried about our body count. Which, mm-hmm. and this is another conversation we didn't have. <laughs> Should you count your professional body count as your personal? Ooh, I like that question. I've never, I mean, I, I've always had a high body count before. So I just kind of like. <laughs> me too, me too, me too. Once me upon too. a time I, I was a hoe. <laughs> and then I continued. <laughs> you know, so I just back like, to like my, my ex only had like four. What, four, his body count was four and at my point mm-hmm. entering that relationship mine was probably mm-hmm. maybe ten times that <laughs> but see but, but see, but see the, the, but the thing of it is it's kind of like like because I remember a, a porn star I was talking about she said I don't count bodies that I shot on camera with professionals because she was like, that's work. You know, period. I feel like that's a valid, that's valid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just stopped keeping track. <laughs> that was my story. I gave a long time ago. <laughs> I, gave, I gave a long time before I got into profession. I was like, well, damn. I mean, yeah. damn remembering girls that I fucked, that I forgot I fucked. I said, wait a second. Yeah, I did <laughs> fuck her, didn't I? Damn, man. I mean, I forget that. You know I tried to keep a list at one point, but then <sighs> I just no. <laughs> I then gave up on that because see, it to me it's like I don't care what nobody say you. No man wants a virgin. He wants a woman that's seasoned. He wants a woman that got some type of experience. <laughs> you know, as much now if you hear these red pill niggas, they want her to be a housewife that's a virgin. You a goddamn lie. Because y'all cheer on that housewife with a Kayla Peach with a heartbeat. Stop playing. <laughs> you know, I think some might want that, but then I wouldn't trust them in the bedroom. 
thing because <laughs> I feel like they want somebody who knows what who doesn't know what they're doing so they can not know how terrible they are. <laughs> well, amazing. Because think how many girls come out of a long term relationship sexless. They were like they didn't even realize sex was that good until they left that dude. Oh yeah, you want a huh? <laughs> Listen, I told you the body count discrepancy. <laughs> but even with four, you would think, because even with four, you would think he has some type of experience of how to please a woman. Because them four could be quality. You feel what I'm saying? But it was not a case of quality or quantity. <laughs> he was just terrible all together, got them. I see why he only had four. <laughs> And he was probably looking to get them folk. <laughs> so now, how do you tell a man he ain't good in bed? Oh, gosh. I mean, I think it's... It kind of depends on, like, why it wasn't good. Mm. Sometimes, like, you're... You know, you just don't mesh well. Um, mm. And then sometimes, like, the first time is just awkward. Mm-hmm. and maybe it's not that the experience wasn't good you just needed some because there was one time um i was with this guy and he was really into humiliation and he was saying these things and i went to him after and i was like if we're going to continue this you need to do less of that <laughs> wait a second did he not at least ask you was you into humiliation before he started that <laughs> the fuck I think it's one of those heat of the moment things. Fucking her, unless she says okay. You get what I'm saying? (laughs) I think it's just one of those heat of the moment things. Like, (laughs) if that's your first go to, I I question. I question you. If the first (laughs) you go to is got to take this dick, you bitch. (laughs) Oh, it wasn't even that. It was more like fat related. Wait a second, wait a second, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on, wait a second. <laughs> wait, wait. Did he have at least an eighth grade education? I'm just saying. It's, <laughs> it's just certain thing. It how in the hell I'm gonna fuck you and fat shame you at the same thing. And didn't even ask you was you into that. It was just I assume. <laughs> and that it, and you probably didn't give no inkling that you was into that. <laughs> there were other oh. things going on that I was into, so I think it just. You just but I mean, that's why communication is so important. Is like, I think yeah. a lot of times, like again, it might not be that the sex was necessarily bad. It just might have mm-hmm. been like they were doing this when you don't enjoy that. Mm-hmm. But see, that's where it comes down to conversation mm-hmm. like that's why i said i like to get to know the lady for a fucker yeah. one it gives me an idea of how to please her and two what she's into because it's okay during the conversation to ask you know, what you into sexually mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying especially if y'all feeling each other that's a conversation that need to be had for y'all even get in the bedroom to begin with it shouldn't oh, be yeah. no i want to fuck check please <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, she, she you, you might not like, he might not like his ass eight, and then she got them sucking dick next to you, you know, stick a tongue in the motherfucker. You know, he feels some type of you just way. Just the you finger know in, you know, don't ask. Surprise! I, I'm saying, you know, period. Or a dude be hitting from the back, he decided he want to thumb the ass. It'd be like, she ain't said nothing about anal. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be shut down. <laughs> that that sex would be done, done quick. She, get out. <laughs> That's all she's gonna say. Get out. <laughs> but see, but see that, but to me, where I came up, you have those conversations. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to know what she's into so you can please it. It's like the dudes nowadays, they don't care about pleasing a the woman, they only care about pleasing themselves. And, well, yeah, and I think that that's like where that whole idea of, you know. Like I said, some guys might want like somebody who's inexperienced because then they are not going to know that like, oh, this guy isn't really doing anything to try for my pleasure. It's just <laughs> he's out well, for, 
We call him a beta male. We call him a beta. (laughs) He's not an alpha. He's a beta. Because the alpha, I want. I want the porn star. I want to prove myself, goddamn. I want to prove <laughs> I can hang. Yeah, I may not do it on camera, but shit. Them betas, no, 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 no. I, I don't want no girl that that experience. Yeah, because you already know you terrible in bed. You don't want her to know you terrible in bed because she ain't had nothing. <laughs> she ain't had nothing. You don't want the confirmation. <laughs> yeah, because then when she get with somebody else, damn, I didn't know we could do all that. I'm like, uh uh-huh, dude, you were dating. <laughs> No, because definitely the first person I got with out once I got out of the relationship, I was like, oh, I forgot this is why I enjoyed sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because four years of like just fizzling and not having that, you know, it's just you get and then you jump on the first one and it happens to be a home run and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it's just like no different than if you bump, you meet somebody, he's good looking, and he pulls the pants down. And oh, that's so cute! <laughs> that's so cute. Yeah, but look at that. Look at- <laughs> oh, but see, but see, that's why I say we because the sex we had, could we even have sex with somebody that's for now? And it'd be good. Mm-hmm. Because we do so much freaky shit that we're into, and we're able to discover ourselves more sexually through porn. Because sometimes we find out things that we didn't even know we liked that we end up liking through porn. So, can we really have a relationship sexually with someone that's vanilla? I mean, I think. I mean, I'm not. I already knew before getting into the industry that I was not a vanilla girly. That mm-hmm. I could not do. Vanilla, it just, it doesn't. I need a little spice. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think if somebody is genuinely enjoys vanilla sex, and maybe they might mm-hmm. enjoy that as a departure from the stuff they do on camera. Mm-hmm. You know, she... if you're always eating exotically, maybe having yeah. the nice, you know, mm-hmm. mac and cheese out of the box is okay. <laughs> like, I love mac and cheese out of the box. I'm not dissing. <laughs> that wasn't a diss. Oh, yeah. I was just saying that's like a comfort food. You know, and mm-hmm. some people might find that comforting instead of doing what they do on the screen all the time. Yeah. But see, even to the point now, if he's a vanilla freak, <laughs> let me make that clear. Vanilla freak, meaning that he's vanilla, but he's open to doing freaky shit that's different. You know, period. Because a lot of times, dudes, we get stuck in this because it worked for one, we can do all. Biggest mistake a man could ever make. <laughs> Trust me. I learned that a long I time ago. I think some guys just like routine. They like to make it a routine. And because, you know, they they know, like, that's the routine that's going to get them there. And, oh, it worked for this woman. So mm-hmm. it can translate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes it really don't. <laughs> yeah, no. Terribly, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thank God that I've never had too many bad experiences sexually. I can count them <laughs> on three fingers at best. That that is peace, but, but like I said, no, nah, it's just to me. Cause <laughs> me I always I've been got plenty freak. stories enough. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I don't get twisted. I I was a freak way before porn. Way I was doing mm-hmm. threesomes public shit, all that shit. So it was right down my wheelhouse when I got into business. You know, yeah. It just, I didn't know anything about Dom and being a Dom mm-hmm. until I got in. You know what I'm saying? And I discovered that I'm into you know, BDSM and shit like that, or what have you. But, um, like I said, even when I sit there, it was funny because Marlon Wayans said he's at 51, he just won regular missionary sex and i said god you're boring man <laughs> uh, I, I feel for your woman if all that is y'all you just missionary and roll and go to sleep that tell me right there you don't last long buddy <laughs> you don't last long buddy because because i'm sorry i just can't do just missionary we got to do some doggy style 
at least, <laughs> at least if no one else. I'm like, damn, I get it, it was a quickie, but no, nah, I, mean, I just find it weird. So shoot, but like I said, I mean, uh, being in porn, being single, being a swinger, being single, <laughs> any of being in the lights of being single is trash nowadays, unfortunately, people. <laughs> But we'll find love one day. One day. Yeah. <laughs> but until then, we just gonna have great sex. So there you go. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I just love your smile, that laugh. She's just so <laughs> sexy. So I think I didn't held up here long enough for an hour, and I got another show I got to take care of. So y'all <laughs> know what time it is, Miss Peach. Tell everybody where they can spend money on you, baby. Uh, you can find me on most platforms, Kayla Peach 90. You can find me on Twitter, and the links are all right there for your convenience. Just say no more. <laughs> so, people, we're at the end of another one. Y'all know what y'all need to do. So, before I close it out, let me tell you what you need to do. You need to first go to the premium smoke room. That's right. On loyal fans, <laughs> more provocative, more wilder, more crazier. Tits come out, dildos might pop out. You won't know unless you subscribe. And guess who you get to see? You get to see Kayla Peach. Show up that big peach and them nice titties as we talk about some <laughs> freaky ass shit. <laughs> you feel me? Also, you can check out my video store where I got some of my triple X work from my past as a male <laughs> talent and producer. The second thing, check out Savage Smoke strictly on Spotify. If you my Spotify users, and you can only watch on Spotify. This is for the men of the business. So I talk to the top producers. ML Times of the business, we give it up. We talk the real about the business. No sugar coating and we 100% honest. And it's behind the paywall. So you know we really 100% honest. So go ahead and subscribe <laughs> over there at Spotify. As well as subscribe to the Premium Smoke Room on Loyal Fans, which is right now on discount to the end of the year. I'm being nice. <laughs> for 55 percent off of the first month and then you got to pay the full price and trust me it's worth it because you get new episodes <laughs> from the premium smoke podcast every wednesday every saturday the chronicles every friday dirty talk and vip smoke room and also i'm looking to and also some more episodes of the smoke is over dark podcast so you go <laughs> check all that out so with that being said you know, we're in these things all day, every day. Life is a learning experience. What's the point of the experience? You haven't learned anything. Smoke is over. Okay, let's say goodbye to you, baby. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>